is the Jeff Santos Show. 33 minutes past the hour, we um, were talking to Jim Roosevelt off the air just a second ago, and uh, he is going to be coming back again, hopefully over the next couple of weeks for an hour. I know a lot of people wanted to talk to him, and we couldn't get to everybody, uh, but I felt it would be kind of unfair to give somebody just 15 or 20 seconds. So um, we will do this again, and uh, again, if you want to listen to the uh, interview if you have friends that uh didn't have a chance you can go to revolution radio network.com that's streaming audio at uh, 6 30 p.m of all the interviews with uh tom nelson for u.s senate in wisconsin an fdr fan and signer of the great uh new 21st century uh, 21st Century Bill of Rights, Economic Bill of Rights. And uh, we, of course, have Harold Meyerson, who's a big FDR supporter. Of course, Harvey K., who's the man. <laughs> Professor Harvey K. And Alan Minsky, of course, who was, was on Monday. And, uh, of course, with the grandson himself, Jim Roosevelt. All this leads to our man, our Renaissance man, who he himself is a fan of Roosevelt, uh, a fan of Harvey K. and Alan Minsky. And it just happens to like the Jeff Santos show. The only, the only, and maybe the only ever individual who has his own live lead-in, because he's a great musician, as well as the executive director of Democracy Watch News, as well as the renaissance man of the Jeff Santos show, on Fridays at 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. It is time to go to the 206 and talk to our good friend, Mark Taylor Canfield. Can I hear you, Mark? Again. Oh my gosh, a crazy week, Jeff, you know, with uh, all the breaking news stories and then um, covering the Biden calling for more police yesterday. And then, uh, yeah, what's up with you know, that? January 6th committee. Uh, yeah, direct challenge to our democracy being discussed every day. Uh, but I wanted to tell you, I was actually communicating today with a recording studio in Boston about a possible project together. They're called the Plaid Dog Studios. So wow. I sent him one of my my music tracks today. So we'll, we'll see where that potential collaboration goes. There's nothing for sure yet, but we were talking about um, this project today. But the bottom line is, in here in Seattle, what I've been telling people is that the clubs are full, and music fan, music-loving fans are really filling up the clubs and supporting the music. Anybody wearing a mask? So great. Inside? Yes, Absolutely, good. and some clubs good, are good, good. still requiring. Some are still requiring vaccination, but but some aren't. You know, but definitely masks. But I mean, I moved to Seattle because of the music scene. So this is so good to see. I was really worried. You and I were talking. You know, just a little over a year ago or so, wondering whether we'd ever see these shows again. And believe me, Seattle is an amazing place. Because when I was in Paris, I remember when I would mention that I was from Seattle, the, the kids there would just yell out, rock and roll, and they would want me to play some Nirvana or Jimi Hendrix. So it's really good to see that people are back supporting the musicians, and it's really good to see that, um, wow, believe it or not, 30,000 people are showing up to see the Mariners. Oh, by the way, Alice Cooper's on tour, Pearl Jam's on tour, Every Kiss is on tour, so everybody and their uncle and their dog is on tour now. But yeah, you know, people are showing up to watch the Mariners, which is more than they're watching the. Yankees. Well, they're playing the Red Sox, of course. You know, this Blowing weekend, so you know, we we got we got to make our dollar bet. Um, you know, um, I'm going to say uh, Red Sox win two out of three this weekend. So, here's my dollar. Uh, you can you can send it to uh, you know to uh, PO Box uh, Jeff Santo show. No, um, <laughs> well, you know, you know that Julio Rodriguez will get a stolen he's a base. Stud, I can tell you man. on that. He knows he his like stuff. He's like number one in the league. He's number yeah. one in the league in stolen bases. He's like, what, fourth?
and batting average. So Bat, he's a batting superstar. average, yep, yep. Yeah, no, he's he is a superstar. Hey, rookie of the year, but probably. Boston has uh, great but before we, too. Oh Boston, yes, we get the big three: JD, sluggers. Bogarts, and Devers. They wow. all got rings, by the way. They all got rings. That means a lot. Yeah. Uh, but before we get into that, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, a lot of people today had an opportunity, and I know you tweeted out, and I thank you for that at Mark Taylor Canfield, uh, uh, the great MTC. Uh, you were talking about uh, the issue of. Um, you know, Roosevelt and Harvey K and, and what we're doing with the what now we're going to call FDR Fridays here on the Jeff Santo show. I'm wondering, you know, what you have heard over the last 24 hours of, of people getting more engaged in politics because of what last night, you know, all the all the channels but Fox, you know, actually had on the live hearings for two hours. Did people tune in? And I'm wondering as well, as you had mentioned this on the issue of gun safety, that it's time that musicians, you mentioned Pearl Jam and our great friend Annie Vetter, and all those talk about gun safety. Well, I think they should be talking about the democracy, too. And, you know, while you're at it, you know, talk about the, you know, the economic bill of rights that Harvey K and all these others. I mean, there are a lot of issues that the musicians and again, just think about this. If you have fascist Donald Trump and the rest of that team over there, there's not going to be music. You see what happened with uh, our, our friends, uh, uh, you know, the the all woman group there in Moscow a few years back. That's what's going to happen here, you know, if we allow the fascists to continue, just as an example. Well, to me, all of these issues are linked, okay, because I've been saying for a long time as executive director for Democracy Watch News that you cannot have a healthy democracy without what? A free press, for sure. You mm-hmm. can't have, you know, when there's corporate monopolies and a handful of people own the media, that's not uh, free freedom of the press. That's why we're ranked 44th in the world in terms of press freedom by reporters without borders and you know, you're never going to hear that from CNN. But also, what Joe Sandberg is um, tweeting about every day, the minimum wage. Okay, right. so if a working 18 class bucks family... in California, make it happen. Yeah, but the majority of people are at like seven bucks, on, you know, and seven right. bucks an hour. And you can't survive in a city like Seattle and that. So you have the working class, which is, you know, getting poorer every day and having to have multiple jobs. How does that affect the family and people's stability in their lives? You've got all of these issues, the Economic Bill of Rights... You know, if you don't have a healthy economy and you don't have people, you have so many people living in poverty and, you know, the neoliberals with their free trade agreements have given away most of the the good paying union jobs. Okay, what do you got? You've got more poverty, a sense of powerlessness in the population and probably increased crime and all sorts of other things. So to me, it's all linked together. You can't have. Also, you know, let's be very clear about this, right? I, I need to say this as a musician, too, is that um, you can't stand uh, for human rights without standing for democracy, and you can't stand for democracy, as a friend of mine said, without having free elections. And how are you going to have free elections when, I, I'm sorry, but I'm using this um, symbolism today, when you when you got the brown shirts marching on Washington, D.C. I mean, there is right. a similarity between these fascist movements around the world and historically where they do like to use physical force and propaganda in order to enforce their will on other people and how to and they often like to steal power you know so there you go it's a part of uh, the whole fascist movement throughout history to be like that and now we have these direct attacks so to quote nbc news i'm so proud of them uh, violent rioters storming the nation's capital in an attempt to interrupt and overturn the certification of a democratic election. How much clearer can you get than that? And that's coming from the corporate media, which usually tries to censor themselves to some degree. But even, you know, people at NBC are saying this is a direct challenge to democracy. We need to say it. So thank goodness there are a few truth tellers left in the corporate media. I know you guys are out there every day telling the truth. And, you know, this is just an ongoing discussion in Seattle, along with other issues like um, reforming police departments. How can you have a functioning democracy when you have an out-of-control, Trump-loving police force? You know, I mean, come on. Uh, Trump does not stand for democracy. He stands for authoritarianism. And in a lot of ways, just dysfunctionalism. I mean, let's face it, that whole family. But here we go. You know, uh, we're back at hearings in Washington, D.C., 
I mean, remember the impeachment hearings, a similar kind of thing. These are attacks on our democracy. Are we going to stand by and let it happen, or are we going to expose it to the world? And right now we're exposing it to the world. And if you look at international media, if you look at Reuters and France 24 and Agence France Press and other foreign news agencies, they are talking about attacks on American democracy. They're not talking about Republicans versus Democrats and what uh, the, the, you know, the majority leader in the House said today about about it. They don't care. They're looking at the facts historically, and they see this as a struggle for democracy in the United States. And the Republicans are too stupid, apparently, or too ignorant or, or whatever to realize that. They're kind of swinging against the, the stream internationally with this whole um, pushback against the hearings. You know, so it's it, it was, you know, there was one right-wing press today that likened it to some kind of Soviet-style trial you know, show trial, and that's so ridiculous. They did the same thing with the impeachment by trying to just discredit it and humiliate everybody involved in it. It's just, that's also a part of a fascist, you know, trend is to humiliate and try to embarrass your opposition. But I don't think it's going to work because I think American people, just like Joe Biden said today, believe it or not, uh, he actually stood up and said that uh, these these are direct uh, attacks on our democracy and that, that movement behind them is still with us. And it's still a battle we have to fight. He's not, he's not saying we won the battle for democracy. He's just saying that we're hopefully we're turning a corner. And, you know, out of all the disagreements I've had with Joe Biden and his kind of mealy mouth silliness sometimes, I actually, you know, appreciated him today standing up as a world leader and a leader of this country and actually saying something about it. At least he has a backbone on some issues. He is willing to say that our democracy is being threatened. And, you know, you're not going to hear that from most authoritarians. So that's a good sign at least. Yeah, no, you're right about that. Um, look, I think we're going to take a couple of calls for you, um, and we're going to want to get into the Mariners and uh, 30K coming out. Um, I, I think that it would be great, and I, and I, I, would, I would tell you, uh, Mark, if, if we can get the musicians around this country, it doesn't al- always have to be the, the Pearl Jams and the U2 and, and the Foo Fighters, but you know, there's some other local bands, particularly regional bands, that can say a few things. I was talking earlier about the idea of young teachers, not young teachers, but teachers as a whole, telling their young students and then the students telling their parents to watch these hearings. I would also not that they're going to be on, I guess, starting on Monday in the mornings, you know, bring in, I remember this was a big deal for me when I was in third grade or fifth grade or whatever, they would have bring in the TV and we would watch things and so forth. Uh, you know, it was kind of cool. And of course people can watch stuff on their computers, you know, it's live streaming and everything else. So you may not even have to do it, but it would be good to get people around the table, uh, around in the classroom, you know, watching this and, you know, one central location, everybody has their eyes and there's big screen TVs and a lot of, you, a lot of, uh, classes today, a lot of, uh, elementary schools. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of lead paint, you know, bouncing off the, the walls too. And that's another issue for another day. Uh, but I, I, I really think that we should try to make this a big deal. I know on, on this show going forward, we're going to be talking about it at least once a day. Um, you know, for the next couple of weeks when they have these hearings and beyond. And my good friend Jerry Austin said the other day, where's the, where's the TV ads and the radio ads? Where are the, the, the ads that go into your inbox when you open your email in the morning? I think all of that and more. It's a full court press ban because our democracy is at stake. It's, you know, it's yeah, no, I'm, I'm, it's no uh, um, you know, false alarm here. No time for levity, as I think it was like... Uh... The former New England boy James Taylor said on his, said on his album Mud Flats Glen, he's like, "No, this ain't no time for levity." So what we got is a very serious situation, and musicians need to stand up and speak out about it. And I'm not saying that every band should write every song as a political statement. I mean, come on, uh, the Black Jones are a perfect example. Some of their songs are just about their own lives and experiences growing up in the Northwest or whatever, and then other songs are direct confrontational songs about the system and. And one of them is a very serious song about racism. And I just wrote a song uh, called Who Do You Think You're Fooling? about Donald Trump and his minions and this kind of pseudo-fascism movement. And then, and then one of the bandmates said, oh, you know, Donna Summers had a song called Who Do You Think You're Fooling? which I'd never heard. We listened to it, but, I, you know, you can't copyright a title, so I guess it's okay. But I think musicians need to, to really be out there and speaking out. And I have been putting out pretty much daily calls in, on different social platforms to bands that I know, and then also bands that, you know, I would like to meet and just saying to them, hey, Paul Stanley from KISS, you know, you're out there every day on Twitter, 
showing off your pretty makeup and, you know, your great uh, pyrotechnics on your concerts. How about speaking about some of these issues that are really affecting people's lives? Because thousands of people follow people like him, like him and Ann Wilson from Heart and, you know, Bruce Springsteen. We talked about him last time. They have a huge following and one That's word right. from them. And one statement and one link to some Amnesty International website or something could really make a difference. And unfortunately, I think a lot of musicians that were just so pent up, I think, during the, the lockdown that they are just happy to be out playing. So they're not thinking politically as much as they should. But it could turn around to bite them, as you mentioned earlier, if we don't pay attention to this right now and start dealing with these issues every day instead of, you know, every once in a while <laughs> when we feel like it. It's kind of like it's beyond those times. We kind of have to d daily uh, fight this battle. And uh, unfortunately, that's just where we're at. And by the way, that riff that I did at the beginning... That's actually my own music, and that it's it's from a, a song called "All I Want to Do Is Rock and Roll," which is going to be coming out soon. But that, yeah, it is very much influenced by Jimi Hendrix, though. And today, I was playing my Les Paul instead of my usual um, Flying V, so I was really loving it that I have these. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, I, I was telling you about, you know, the idea of Lucille and B.B. King naming your guitar, and you said anything just after women yeah. as opposed to Jimi Hendrix. I got a better one for you, because you're always tweeting okay. about this. You got to name yeah. it Ann, after Ann Wilson. There you go. Ooh, you know, and she would like that. I mean, you know, she's, I saw a great interview with her the other day where she was talking about the, the beauty and, and, you know, magic of being a musician, which I really related to. But uh, she's, a, she's a very, you know, she really likes rock and roll. She really likes being on stage. Rock star, but she enjoys the. the yeah, um, oh, she the, does a great job. So, if, um, so if hey, I want to, I want to, I want to take a couple of quick calls for you because we're running out of time, my friend. And before we get to Mariners and sure. Red Sox baseball, um, but uh, I would say we, we, if you want to call her Annie, you know, kind of you know, make it a little bit of a, Ooh, uh, I, uh, you know, there you go. I like so, I think see, I'm telling you, man, it, just just come to me. I'm, I'm the man it. with the ideas. You can you can pay me after I got the show. It. Uh, <laughs> all right, MTC. Let's uh, let's go to uh, uh, Minneapolis first, and then up to uh, down to Los Angeles. Uh, talk to John, and then Tom. Uh, John, you are next with MTC. Go right ahead, man. Yeah, um, I just wanted to make a brief comment. Uh, I think in the future, you know, if uh, you know some of these musicians, if they don't realize the importance of the fact that, uh, you know, you need to have freedom in order to express anything creative, creatively and artistically. And I know people who, uh, you know, try to creatively express themselves uh, in a totalitarian regime. Uh, one guy was a student of, um, of Hudi Amenuin. Uh, he taught at the, Len the Leningrad, now it's called the St. Petersburg Conservatory, and, you know, he could have been a virtuoso, but, you know, having to do things like uh, you had to memorize uh, uh, the, you know, Communist Manifesto and then uh, tell that to your students. This was in the Brezhnev years. No matter how ridiculous it, it was and how stupid it was and a waste of time. And I think, it, you know, it left a permanent scar in this person's psyche. He had an alcohol problem, and he could have been a virtuoso like, uh, like Joshua Bell, uh, but he died as a result of, I think, a lot of this kind of, uh, you know, what it does to your personality when you live in a totalitarian regime, mm -hmm. and we should think of that. You know, like people might have to memorize long uh, tracks of Mein Kampf, and also, maybe, who knows, if the Trumpers get in power, they might come up with their own little yeah. uh, ditty and ideology that we all have to have shoved down our yeah. throats. Um, yeah. and and how do, how do you lie yeah. to make anyway. it today? Yeah, that, that would be a it's good one. Like thank, what, you, yeah. thank you, John. I'll, it's Go like ahead, Mark. What, John, it's like what Aldous Huxley was warning us about with Brave New World, and he's the one who repeated you know, the phrase that uh, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. Because, yeah, in a authoritarian society, individualism is stamped out. Uh, that You know, they, they don't want um, innovative thinkers at that point. They want everybody to just go along, to get along. So if you are uh, what my grandmother would call, you know, the, the nail that sticks up, they want to hammer it. And so, unfortunately, that's what happens in an authoritarian society. I'm glad I'm still living in a country where a bunch of guys can get up on stage and put on face makeup in their 50s or 60s or whatever and have a great time and everybody loves it because luckily we still have some joy about rock and roll in the early days 
uh, before the Berlin Wall fall, well, the Berlin Wall fell, there were a lot of punk bands in East Germany and in Russia who were a major part of the political developments there and were really fighting for freedom of expression and freedom of speech. And many of them were persecuted, and it was really a dangerous thing to just be in a political punk band at that time. And now we're seeing that happen again in Russia with Pussy Riot and, you know, other bands. It's really an authoritarian regime always you know, wants to control the arts. If they don't shut it down, then they definitely want their messages to be delivered and not some, you know, crazy rock and roll anthem. So there you go. We saw uh, Brian May, which blew my mind up on stage outside of Buckingham Palace uh, a few days ago, and they were playing We Will Rock You, and that's become kind of like a world anthem, you know? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, the, the, re the resurgence of, that, of Queen to the mainstream, I mean, I've always liked uh, Queen, and, and uh, but if you think about it, I mean, you know, whether it was um, back in the 90s with uh, Michael Myers and Wayne's World with Bohemian Rhapsody, but, I mean, yeah. since since uh, the movie has come out, I mean, I think it's everywhere. I think he, he played... Um, Brian May and those guys were playing for the Queen the other day, if I'm mistaken. So, I mean, yeah, that's, so the, you know, the, the Queen playing for Queen. Queen. Is the, <laughs> it's the Platinum Jubilee. I was yeah, exactly. Queen, Queen Mother's birthday, which is a big celebration, but this was right, huge. Yeah. No, it's massive. This has been around forever. Yes, I mean, well that's that's, that's 1950 that stuff, man. Hey, I want to I go to Tom in Los Angeles, uh, talk about a place that would do well to uh, to have all these great concerts, you know, right there. You know, you could do it in the Hollywood Bowl. It would be fantastic. Uh, Tom, you're next with Mark Taylor Canfield. Go right ahead, my friend. Hey, I'm TC. How's it going? Good. Good to hear from you. What's up in L.A.? Good, man. I, I was thinking MTC oil, makes it's nice and smooth, so you could die. Uh, Use that as part of your MTC uh, branding. Um, well, the MTC, so for my label, we talk about the MTC. So if you think if the, the C just dried up, it would be an MTC. <laughs> like there you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, well said. I am well a said. Proud, I'm a proud FDR Democrat, as you know, and um, I do believe that we the people are the government. Um, I think that last night, uh, or I think what we have to get through in this whole uh, hearings is that what type of country do we want yep. as the American people? And someone's got to start asking that question because it's not about the politicians. In fact, I would say that most of you know the politicians that were stormed at the Capitol should probably wonder that's how those kids feel in, in these elementary schools going to school and having a, a person come in with a, you know, a AR-15 and blowing them all away. Um, so I, I think people are um, not so interested in the actual politicians, but I think we have to ask, what do we want as a country? And who are we as a country? And that way you're, 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 you're touching everybody in terms of what it is. Also, Jeff, I, I took the, the words New Economic Bill of Rights and spells out N-E-B-O-R, which you could say neighbor, and you could say because we care about our neighbor. N E B O R. Will you be my neighbor? <laughs> Will you be my neighbor? <laughs> hey, by the way, John, I wanted to I wanted ah. to respond to what you said. But you know, a gun violence is not a political. It, it's not political. It's just violence. No. It's a criminal act. Exactly. So I think exactly. we have we all have to remember that whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, a democracy is uh, a sacred icon in our culture in western culture and so uh whether what doesn't matter what party you belong to like uh, biden nope. said today you know republicans you can join this fight for democracy too if you want or you can go the other way but you know the door is open for everyone to join the pro-democratic movement in the united states and i want to be one of those you know helping it along because we've all, i've been saying for a long time we need a democracy movement in the united states and people would just laugh so you know unfortunately biden today said well it's my it sounds corny to talk about you know protecting democracy it's like no joe that's not corny uh, that's called true patriotism right and if we've gone to get, the point where our own yeah, let's get away from the republican talking talk points we'd be great it's exactly not corny, joe it's not to say it ain't so, Joe, you know, <laughs> I'd say you didn't say that yeah. because it's not a joke and it's not corny and, it, and our own president needs to take it more seriously. That's all I, I have to say. Thank you. I got 10 seconds, and Mark. I mean, Tom, uh, go right ahead. Democrats, you need to go on offense. Stop playing defense and stop playing victims. We have victims are called the Republicans. And remember, if the Republicans are stealing it, they're doing it. You got it, my friend. Well, you go. Have a great weekend, Tom. Uh, MTC, uh, I got a dollar on uh, the Red Sox over the Mariners. Big, big crowd this weekend in Seattle, eh? 
Oh my God! Thirty thousand people at the games. Hey, I saw George Kirby uh, his de- in major league debut on Mother's Day too. Blew me my mind. He struck out like six batters. He was crazy. I don't know what he's done since then because I keep missing him when he pitches. But I saw Julio Rodriguez play the other day, and oh my God, he's on fire! And he's so funny too because he really enjoys the game. So every time he steals a base, then he starts joking with the, the opposing team's base, <laughs> the player on that base, and shakes their hand, and he's really jolly and jovial. So it's great to see somebody who really loves the game. And if you want to check out my music, go to YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe, and you can check out all my music videos. And I'm also at SoundCloud and Democracy Watch News. Have a great weekend. MTC, enjoy your weekend, my friend. Thank you, thank you. I want to thank Ron Kreider for producing this broadcast. Thank you all. Great calls today from all of our great calls from California and Chicago to Minneapolis, uh, to Arizona, and everywhere else. Keep on fighting, folks, peacefully with a capital P. Have a great weekend. Back on Monday with some big news. Until then, my name is Jeff Santos. And right now it is my time to say I gotta go.